Okay. Um, I want to talk about where you went when you left your residence on the day of the murder. You tried to turn on to Trescott, and then you ended up where? I went... um, I was supposed to go to a party that night, a stock the bar party, so I went to a liquor store to pick up what they had asked for as the present for their party. Um, So I went to the liquor store, I picked up the alcohol, I stopped, I think I got gas, and then I went to lunch to meet my friends. And the liquor store purchase appears to have occurred at 12.49 based on the receipt. Do you have any reason to dispute that timing? that sounds right. Okay, and then from there to the restaurant? Yes. And where was the restaurant located? Um, Mosaic. I actually don't remember. I just remember I would go north on uh, Thomasville Road. All right. And so it was. And is the restaurant where law enforcement came to speak with you, and you ended up going with them to the police station? Right. That's correct. Greg, what do you got? Yeah. Watch the impact of all these things we've been talking about about the back and forth because. Her entire respiration is all up here now, and you see her whole body moving as she's talking. It's it, or she's breathing in heavy. It's almost like she's heaving. This response may sound a little bit rehearsed because I think she's probably come up with exactly how she's going to tell this story over time. Does that mean it's a lie? Don't think so. And we know that she has evidence for all those places she went because she was at the restaurant at this time. She was at a liquor store at this time. So all she's doing is telling her story. And one of the things it does point out, Scott. Vray says bigger illustrators are probably more often true than deceptive. And we see that in her. She's doing all the right stuff. There there are a couple of things here that that are interesting for me, though. Um, All the elements of what she's saying here are true. And then she does something that you'll see in your life every day. When you get in an altercation with somebody and you're going back at it, back and forth and back and forth, the first time you find common ground and people do it naturally, guys like me who would take advantage of it, know that you're feeling that way when you immediately become over accommodating because the first common ground you get when you're in an altercation, you over accommodate. You're trying to get back to common with them. People that know that can take advantage of you and manage that and manage your delivery of that and make you feel stupid, make you feel manipulated or make you do something for them. So just be cautious when you're doing that. Realize that it's innate in humans to try to mend that bridge as quickly as you can. But be careful that people don't take advantage of that, manipulate it, and turn it back on you. Uh, Mark, what do you got? Yeah. So, look, for me, the timeline and this wind-back gesture that she's doing, for me, that seems congruent. That seems like it makes sense. Chase, I'll come to you next because I'd like to hear your view on on, on whether it makes sense for you, but it feels, feels right uh, to me. But there is something about it which is quite laboured. So I think, um, though it's accurate what she's talking about, she needs us to know exactly how accurate this is. And also, I think it's laboured because she is a little bit um, uh, off balance throughout all of this. I think to everybody's point here, the 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 attorney has done a job of destabilising her. I think she's destabilised. I think the information is accurate but she's trying to find clear balance throughout this and 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 get herself back on point i think the eyes go to the right kind of place as well for her to be recalling actual directions uh, but chase i'd be interested in if you see any subtlety in that 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 doesn't quite ring true what do you, what do you got uh it's like you we teed this up it's perfect so right, I'll right. tell you exactly what you saw and exactly why that seemed off. Let me tell you something about what I did today, and all of it's going to be true. I woke up this morning, I had some coffee, and I filmed a YouTube video. Something is missing here because I did two things in a row, and then I go like this to talk about the third thing. There's something here in this timeline that she's built here from her left to her right, which is how we typically build timelines. And I'm moving from my right to your left, so it makes more sense. So she starts out with this, I did this thing, this thing, and then I did this. I wonder what was going on inside of this one foot long window when two giant chores that might have taken half an hour are this big. 
what happened inside that little window. And Mark, you're right, her eye home or where she normally looks to access information up into her right is there. And the attorney, the, the prosecutor is holding this pin the whole time while, while she's asking these difficult questions. This has been proven, I think, in some studies, definitely in every interrogator that I know of. Holding a pen and acting like you're about to write down a bunch of notes reduces honesty dramatically. Acting like you're about to write everything down and everything's being like recorded on some big form uh, re really reduces somebody's openness and somebody's honesty. I know interrogators who use like the, the back of a torn apart Walgreens receipt and a little pencil uh, to take notes like they forgot their notepad and stuff. It increases the level of openness because there's a lack of permanence. The pen and the paper suggest there's some permanence to their behavior. And our number one goal, according to me anyway, in interrogation is to force a person into short term thinking, which means they're not thinking about the consequences of what they're saying and doing as long as they're being honest. Scott, what do you got? All right. <clears throat> now, has anybody been thinking about those that adapter I was talking about earlier? Non-stop. Okay. Because in this one, she does in this clip, she does it 37 times. And it's it's one of those things that's hidden in plain sight. And it's something she does over and over and over again. And I went back and watched once I saw this, I didn't want to add it from the beginning to here because it was such a big deal. I couldn't believe I didn't see it. And when I tell you what it is, you go, ah, it's her her nostril flares. She does it 37 times in this one clip. And they're, mm. they're sometimes they're big, sometimes they're small. Now, quite often when things happen like this, it's it's like you can view it like a tick, like what her brother has, you know. So, but she's trying to get rid of that built up stress and tension. Now, usually when you see somebody flare their nostrils like that, I got a big nose. So it's going to be easy for you to see. And they'll do that, they'll do this with it. They'll and breathe in, they'll, they'll, flare their nostrils and push their, it's not lip compression. It's just, it is, but it isn't what we usually look at is what I call stress mouth or compressed lips. They smush their lips together with their teeth as they flare their nostrils. And when you do that, anytime you goof around with your mouth or someone does and you touch your lips or push on your lips, that sends a signal to your, to your brain that says, let's relax. You need to relax. Something's up. And that's what we're seeing here. And that's what she keeps doing over and over and over. And and I counted, I, I think I, I was up to 150 something when I stopped and wow. then I started wow. again. But I got from the beginning up to now, there are so many of them. And it it's, I don't want to say it's mind blowing, but I, I can't believe I didn't, I didn't see it up to now, but look for it when you go back to, because when, once you start doing this on her, you're not going to be able to, to stop looking at it or looking for it. Now, um, see if you can, uh, all the panelists, uh, see if you can count these as we go through on this, um, how many times she does it. See if you can count the 37 that I found. There may be more, but this tells us that her stress level is higher than it looks initially. And this is her biggest, and I think only besides uh, a couple of those, uh, the, see the leg rub, that might be one of the, the few adapters we've seen. That might be one, the only adapter. And I think that might be why we haven't seen any or seen very many. It's because that is such a, bi a big deal in here. So take a look at that from here on out, and you'll see it over and over and over again. Uh, che or Mark, what do you got? Uh, I, I, I've been. I think we're all done. Everybody. Are we? Okay, I was last. Hey, hey Chase, I, I came in late and, and scrambled through these. I missed and then, or I would have been all over that. You know that. Because when you say and then, yeah. Oh yeah, this oh, big yeah. jump. Yeah, yeah, great, and, great and, catch. And Scott, I, I did not notice her nose. Yeah, watch it. I've got a big one. Everybody go. Oh my God, what's wrong with his nose? Why does he keep doing that? But hers, I don't think it's petite, but it's not as big as mine. One of those tape replays. Okay, um, I want to talk about where you went when you left your residence on the day of the murder. You tried to turn on to Trescott, and then you ended up where? I went. Um, I was supposed to go to a party that night, a stock the bar party. So I went to a liquor store to pick up what they had asked for as the present for their party. Um, so I went to the liquor store, I picked up the alcohol, 
I stopped, I think I got gas, and then I went to lunch to meet my friends. And the liquor store purchase appears to have occurred at 1249 based on the receipt. Do you have any reason to dispute that No, timing? that sounds right. Okay. And then from there to the restaurant? Yes. And where was the restaurant located? Um, Mosaic. I actually don't remember. I just remember I would go north on uh, Thomasville Road. All right. And so it was... And is the restaurant where law enforcement came to speak with you and you ended up going with them to the police station, right? That's correct. If you like this video, get the full body language breakdown and analysis on our main channel by clicking this video right here.